Kia ora koutou, uh, ko Rim Patterson toko ingoa. My name is Rim Patterson and I'm an artist based in Auckland, Tamaki, Makoto. So the big inspiration for the work guide Kayarahi is the sighting of the apparition of a phantom waka 11 days before the eruption of Mount Tarawera in 1886. And this apparition was seen by Guide Sophia Te Paia Hinerangi while she was taking a tour group to the pink and white terraces. At that time, Guide Sophia noticed this, the levels of the lakes rising. And I guess mixed with all the gases that must have been released from under the earth at the time, an apparition of a long wakatoa appeared in the shadows in the distance. And on that waka were noted 13 men all standing to attention looking back at her and her group. And what's always intrigued me about the story is that at once it was an omen of the eruption that was going to come, but it can also be scientifically explained as the spectre of the Brocken, where light particles form shadows across mist and clouds. But it was an important event and a very important time because it displaced um, a lot of of Te Arawa iwi from that area, but also uh, the iwi that I whakapapa to Ngāti Rangitihi were forced from that area to where we now reside in Matata. My father was born in Matata, which is a, a, small, a small town uh, in the Bay of Plenty. My father's father, my grandfather, was a sand miner in Matata and sand has become a very a very big part of guide kayarahi because it not only honors the shorelines as a place where all these migrational waka landed when they hit the shores of Aotearoa but also my own whakapapa of my grandfather and father's and my relationship to sand but then spending so much of my childhood at Piha, where my mother's father had built our family batch, meant that I was surrounded again by a different type of sand. It was the black sparkling sands of the west coast. And within these sands, I remember being um, feet burnt, chasing dogs as a young boy, but also of swimming in a sea that was really reflective too and just as sparkly when the sun hit it as the sands. So I'm sure that growing up in a glitter landscape really made an impression on me as a young boy to make the work that I do now. You know, I've been, I've been a practicing artist for 25 years now, I think. You know, so my early career began with glitter and I'm sure the rest of my career will still include glitter because it's a material I can't escape, but it's a material that feels like it will forever inspire the discovery of something that it has never been before. And I do think that Guide Kayarahi is very much a part of Glitter's life story here. I wonder if glitter has been allowed to grow up? Has glitter been able to transform into its adult self as chandelier crystals and not only reflect light that sparkles but now throw light that becomes rainbows and orbs? I like to think of that sparkle that glitter expresses as a material has a natural beginning and all things that sparkle are things that we can find in our natural world. It's the sparkling black sands and the sun hitting the sea on our beaches but it's also the way light might catch um, a drop of water dew on a plant 
all these bits of magic are still around us and still based in nature. And they don't exist without the importance of the day and of the light. And with that light comes mātauranga, knowledge, whakapapa, genealogy, and tikanga. That it introduces something quite mystical into the everyday. And that system of thinking is very much aligned to how I like to live. And I hope that those experiences activate my work at a deeper level to acknowledge the histories of our whakapapa and where we've, we all come from. And that the works honour the very beginnings as we work our way through the present to a very end.